But I did screen. I did screen Perfect Day at um, the New Orleans Film Festival first. That was. See, that's the the. The, the the weird thing is, is we were all kind of just going, all right, well, we're acting out here, getting parts, but, we're, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, most of the parts that we get are just not as interesting as the stuff that we've done uh, on, on stage. I agree. And, I agree. And, cer and certainly not as interesting as what we can write. You know, like when Eddie started writing that, that mm -hmm. was always my thing is I had seen and if still to this day, I've seen the best acting I've ever seen, most interesting acting in acting classes. And um, with the Wednesday night and with John Dennis's classes, I would see this amazing work. And uh, especially when Eddie started writing that, I was like, okay, this is better than anything we get to act in. So when he wanted to make it, I just, I joined him full force to help him get it done the way he wanted to get it done. And um, because he didn't know as much about filmmaking as maybe I did, because I had already made um, Perfect Day and Sneaking Sally Down the Alley, which I shot on film. It was before digital, you know, so we shot that on 16 millimeter, um, which was, made it even harder to, to make your own movie because you had to shoot it on film, get it developed, have it imported into a computer so that you could edit it. And then you had to know people that had all this stuff. Um, but I had done all these things. So when Eddie decided to make his first film, I just had kind of a plethora of, you know, handyman knowledge on how to do a lot of stuff. And so that's what I was his extra crew member. I just helped him get things done from the beginning, you know? Um, and it was, it was the best because yeah. it was, our friends and 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 what Eddie wrote um and then Sean Richardson came in and just knew how to shoot it you know and he he was he had his own um he had his own artistic vision that he brought to it that was just bumped it up another level I think yeah okay so um yeah. like, it's like when you, you ask yeah. these questions I start bouncing all over the place yeah. too no, that's 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 awesome. Um, I actually, um, you mentioned something in there, but I kind of I kind of forgot it. Maybe I'll come back. Um, so, okay, let's talk about Augie. Okay, because I remember um, in one of the videos, I think it's the behind the scenes one on your Vimeo page. Um, you're talking about the way because I guess Eddie did all the casting, correct? And yes. So. Um, and you mentioned how he 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 had kind of an anti-type cast approach, especially to Joe Crest and um and Wayne. Um, but you did talk about um your role. Um, like how do you fit in? I'd like, would you say, would you say that was uh, a type cast or anti-type? I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'll I'll be honest with you, like I kind of I don't think in the beginning that I was even in it as an actor. Like, I don't even know if Augie was a role or I'll put it to you this way. Augie was there, but I had worked with um, Eddie on all these scenes, like in acting class. I had helped him, I'd given him notes when we had different actors reading the parts, uh, guys from out here. And, um, I didn't even remember, like he, uh, he offered me the role of Augie and I was like, who's Augie? And he's like, and he goes, you know, the guy that runs the, and he, I go, I go, there's a character. Like, I didn't even remember there being a guy because you have to admit, if you look at it, it's a very tiny role. Very I mean, subtle. yeah. he yeah. speaks a few times, but uh, he's there. But you know, if you're reading the script, you, he doesn't jump off the page at all. True. Um, yeah. So, in the day, I always thought Eddie was just like, like, you know, he needed somebody to do it or, or he was throwing me a bone, like, here's something, you know, um, I thought he felt bad because we did all this, you know, we had worked on it so much and, and everybody else was in it. But what was interesting to me about Augie was I didn't have to do um, any serious work other than just be there with those guys while we were making the film. And, um, 
and I'm really happy with the way it came out. You know, I mean, I, I, I love Augie. And, and most of it's just because he gave him that great monologue where he has a scene where he talks to the two guys. And you kind of look at it as he's really the only one that um, is not a total child, I think. You know, I mean, he's he's a little bit he's a little bit more grown up than the rest of them because they're all still. You know, I mean, he he's had his heart broken. They've left him. I mean, his. his He's had his uh, many run-ins with women, and I think he's sort of when you find that movie starts. He's just as as you were talking to me about something that might be a through line. He's a lost man, you know, and so he just he's got this diner that he gets up every morning and he runs. But if you think about it, it's a it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty bust out diner, man. I mean, because you've got. You got those four cats coming to the diner. And you don't really have anybody else, which I think is cool that you don't really notice it while you're watching the movie, but that's who you that's that's who you see in that diner. The uh, the four main characters, and then finally, uh, Laura's character comes. It, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel that empty, but because the way they 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 fill it up, you know. Yeah, he he kind of Augie kind of takes himself out of it out of the. He takes himself out of the drama. He he with you know like he talks about how he withholds. He he he's he's just completely withdrawn. But he's still there. He's just you know he's just kind of. Uh, I think he judges. He 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 looks he looks down at those guys because they're like he just keeps sort of being exasperated. All the drama, yeah, the drama. Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. They don't have they don't have the uh, and I, I don't know that. Augie would be any better than them. Uh, he, I don't know. He just seems a little bit more grown up than them. Like I said, like he just seems a little bit past where they are in the moment of the film, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's got the uh, kind of, I guess he, there's a emotional maturity there because he's not, he's, he doesn't get sucked into the drama. So, yeah. Um, so, Anita's Grill. Um, that that is a good segue into the the filming locations, which is another interesting thing. I guess um, you guys really didn't have to pay anything to to film. You know, I mean, you talked about you actually shot there for free. Like, yeah, we shot there for free. We sh we shot at LSU Stadium in the oh, yeah. in the bathroom for free. Um, but a lot of that, like. One of the things is it's Eddie. Yeah. Eddie could like, Eddie could charm anybody into anything. I'm just, I'm sure of it. But like he walked into uh, the diner and he loved it, but he brought his daughter with him when he asked. And his daughter, his daughter was like, Cute. I don't know, maybe seven or something, Daisy. And he's like sitting there with his daughter on his lap, talking to the owner going, yeah, I'm making this movie. And the cool thing about Eddie is he's recognizable to a lot of people um, because of uh, some of the films that he's done, like Ocean's Eleven. And that being like one that really kind of made a, a lot of people saw that movie. Yeah. But um, and in New Orleans, they recognize him as famous. But, you know, Eddie's like the most down to earth guy. And he's just super sweet and charming. And yeah, he I mean, I don't think I could have talked an owner of a restaurant like that into letting me use it for free but eddie did and that was huge because the diner is i mean it's the movie location the main location the apartments that we got i think were his uh his aunt's house and um then we just stole some locations too like on lsu campus yeah. uh, including that bathroom we just snuck in you know oh, wow. okay we just snuck in put our equipment in there and shot and then snuck out 